Life for the Eastern North Pacific Gray Whale begins in the warm lagoons of Baja, Mexico. Born into a lifetime of continual migration, they will undertake one of the longest journeys of any mammal on the planet, traveling some 9 to 13,000 miles annually. A survival strategy that has evolved over 30 million years. The whales leave the lagoons of Baja and begin their journey north to the Arctic summer feeding grounds in February, segregating into groups according to age and sex, with nursing females leaving last and only when their calves are strong enough for the journey. The migration northbound is led by the newly pregnant females. Again, a mix of adults and juveniles behind that. Then the cows and calves migrate separately, and they migrate in a, in a different corridor. They're right up against the coast, almost in the surf line. The shallow coastal migratory corridor offers the calves a safer passage seldom frequented by their primary predator, the killer whale. Every year, NOAA scientists monitor the eastern population during its northbound migration from the Piedras Blancas observation station off central California. Hello, that's the same female. The purpose of the research is to monitor reproduction in the eastern North Pacific gray whale population. Boy, this is good, good surfacing. Counting the northbound cows and calves, scientists are able to estimate the total number of calves born that season into the eastern North Pacific population. That basically gives us an idea of, of kind of how well the population is doing. Is it growing? Is it stable? Is it declining? After about four months, the whales reach their summer feeding grounds, the food-rich Arctic waters of Chukchi, Beaufort, and the northwest Bering Sea. Gray whales are bottom feeders, so they dive down to the bottom and take a big scoop of mud, Arctic mud. And in that mud is their favorite food, the little tiny crustaceans, they're called amphipods. An adult can eat up to 2,500 pounds of these crustaceans in one day but a gray whale's milk is about 50 to 55% milk fat. And those calves are feeding on that milk fat. They consume about 50 gallons a day, putting on a lot of weight, anywhere from 50 to 60 pounds a day. As fall arrives and the ice begins to form in the Arctic, the whales begin their migration south. The southbound migration is led by near-term pregnant females. So these are the females that are gonna calve this year. They're followed by a mix of adults and juveniles uh, with primarily yearlings and young juveniles making up the tail of the migration. In order to monitor the overall number of whales migrating south, a team of NOAA scientists observe and count the whales from a field station in Granite Canyon, California. Hello. Science has been really important in the sort of conservation and management of all whale populations because that's essentially how we learn about these animals, how we understand what they're doing, what the threats are, how they're responding to those threats. Although commercial whale hunting is a thing of the past, pollution, ship strike, predators, and entanglement in commercial fishing gear, as well as climate change, are just some of the daily obstacles that whales must continue to navigate during their lifetime of migration. Education is one of the most important things we can do to protect any species, is to get knowledge and information to people that are either coastal fishermen people that are conducting seismic surveys, oil and gas developers, to the Navy, whoever it might be. The more education, the more data we can bring to them, the better off the whales are going to be. <laughs>